In the northwest of the United States, the Sauk and Fox Indians had maintained their territory along the Mississippi River in Illinois. The Fox Indians numbered about 1,600 and the Sauk numbered roughly about 4,800. In 1804, William Henry Harrison, the governor of the Indiana Territory, drew up the Treaty of St. Louis, which bought and overtook all of the Foxes and Sox's land. The treaty allowed them to stay on it until the U.S. decided they had to leave. It returned for their land in Illinois. The Sauk and Fox Indians received a small amount of money and were guaranteed the right to hunt and plant their corn in a designated area of the land. However, the Fox and Sox leaders felt that the treaty was invalid because the two signers on behalf of the Indian tribes were unqualified to speak for them. In 1828, the Sauk and Fox Indians were given one year's notice to leave their land under the Treaty of 1804. In 1829, the Sauk chief, Keokuk, decided resistance was futile Indians quickly realized that they were powerless against the U.S. government. So Keokuk led the Indians across the Mississippi to live by the Iowa River. Black Hawk was a Sauk and Fox war leader who had been known to cause trouble for the U.S. government. Black Hawk had fought alongside the British in the War of 1812 against the U.S. He felt the Treaty of 1804 was completely invalid and that they had been forced to move unjustly from their land. In 1830, Black Hawk and a band of followers returned to Sakanuka lands to plant and harvest their annual crops as had been promised to them in the treaty, but found them occupied by white settlers. Their designated land had been overrun by white homes, and the settlers had even gone so far as to build houses over the Indian graves. As a consequence, Black Hawk and his followers were not able to harvest their corn. The Sauk and Fox nearly starved to death that season. Black Hawk, being so strongly opposed to the unfairness of the U.S., decided he had to do something about all the injustice that was taking place. Black Hawk again returned in the spring of 1831 to try to plant more corn for his people. This caused widespread panic within the white settlers of Illinois. Governor Reynolds called up a militia to try and remove the Indians from the area. Black Hawk was forced to sign a treaty, the Corn Treaty which stated that he and his people would leave Illinois and return to their assigned land near the Iowa River. In exchange, he received corn to return back to his people. Black Hawk, being a leader and a warrior, wouldn't give up so easily. His glory and the reputation of his warriors was at stake. In the fall, Black Hawk was informed that the British and the Potawatomi, Ojibwa, Ottawa, and Ho-Chunk tribes would support him if he decided to take a stand against the United States government. This fueled Black Hawk's confidence into believing he had a chance against the American armed men. Keokuk tried to persuade the Sauk that it was a lie and that they would fail miserably to simply accept defeat. Many still supported Black Hawk nonetheless, and a mission to reclaim lost land had begun. Black Hawk moved about 500 warriors and 1,500 others, including elders, women, and children, back down toward Illinois. The group of Indians didn't look menacing by any means but the Americans responded by calling up a militia and requested backup from the U.S. Army soldiers as well. On the side of the U.S. was Future President Zachary Taylor Captain Abraham Lincoln Future President of the Confederate States Jefferson Davis Future Wisconsin Governor Henry Dodge Zebulon Pike The son of Alexander Hamilton The son of Zaniel Boone and General Henry Atkinson. In May 10th, the militiamen started pursuit of Black Hawk and his followers. They even burned a Ho-Chuck Indian village that Black Hawk had stopped by at to ask for help. Black Hawk went further to the Kishiwakawi where he learned that the Potawatomi would not support him and that no British troops or help was coming. The Battle of Stillman's Run took place in May 13, 1832, near modern Rockford, Illinois. The U.S. militiamen were close behind the Black Hawk and its warriors. Feeling defeated, Black Hawk decided to send out several Indians to meet up with the militia leaders and invite him back to the Indian camp so that they could discuss a surrender. Under a white flag, the missionaries were shot by militiamen. No one knows if they misunderstood the Indian sign of surrender or they simply were not interested in it. They charged the Sauk camp. Forty Sauk warriors were able to hold off 275 militiamen 
who ended up running away from the battle in confusion. After the attack, Black Hawk and his warriors were convinced that the white men would not honor the conventions of warfare. Black Hawk and his followers were on the run. Over the span of a few weeks, the Indians raided white settlements for food and supplies. Conflicts between the militiamen and Indians continued while on the run. By early July, the Sauk had run out of food. Many elders and children died due to the lack of food and exhaustion. They had to leave the week behind and bury their dead as they made their way back to safer grounds. On July 21, 1832, the Battle of Wisconsin Heights took place. Sixty Sauk warriors held off 700 militiamen and army soldiers. Sauk leader, Leo Pope, tried to offer a surrender once more, but was ignored by the white men. For 16 weeks, Black Hawk and his warriors led the militiamen on a goose chase. The women, children, and elderly couldn't keep up, so Black Hawk and his warriors raided white settlements to distract the militia and U.S. troops. They managed to elude the militiamen and keep them at bay from their families. White Cloud joined the Black Hawk and his followers. White Cloud was a Winnebago prophet that felt sympathy towards Black Hawk's cause and had decided to help. On August 1st, 1832, the most monumental point of the Black Hawk War took place, the Battle of Bad Axe. Some refer to it to the massacre at Bad Axe. The Indians continued forward until they reached the mouth of the Mississippi River near the banks of the Bad Axe River. Ignoring White Cloud's advice to split up into smaller groups and hide, the Indians prepared to cross the river to safety. But the Indians were trapped. A steamboat had caught up to the Indians and was waiting for them in the Mississippi River and the U.S. Army and militiamen were at their back. All hope was lost. The Indians yet again attempted to surrender. The Americans responded by massacring hundreds of men, women, and children. The steamboat fired on defenseless Indians that were trying to cross the river to safety. Some were mothers, carrying their young children on their backs. Other women and children were shot by the U.S. Army troops while trying to surrender. The slaughter on the banks of the river continued for eight hours. The Mississippi ran red with blood. Only about 70 Sauk made it across the river, only to be killed by the Sioux warriors who were fighting on the side of the U.S. The month after the battle, the U.S. government attempted to track down anyone associated with Black Hawk. But the elusive Black Hawk and White Cloud managed to avoid being captured. White Cloud's brother convinced Black Hawk and White Cloud to turn themselves in. Black Hawk and White Cloud recovered their strength and waited while the Winnebago women made new suits of white deer skin for them. On August 27th, Black Hawk's band surrendered to the Winnebago agent Joseph Street at Prairie du Chien, and later met up with Andrew Jackson as a prisoner. The events that led up to the Black Hawk War were the product of the greed for land, the massacre of the hundreds of innocent Indian lives at the Battle of Bad Axe, was the product of vengeful U.S. troops seeking glory and victory against the Indians.